Okay, so this is it, um, the WTF1. Today is going for an MOT. Here it is in all its glory. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's take it for an MOT. So let's take it for an MOT and see if it passes. passed its MOT first time. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't think it would pass and it did pass. It's just like, it's just amazing. So that's it, it's legal. Let's go for a bit of a drive. Okay, right, we're in the WTF1, and today we're having a photo shoot with Custom Car Magazine, uh, and the car's all finished, and good times. So, here we go. Let's go down to the, I think it's an industrial estate, and we're going to take a load of cool photos. See you in a minute. Okay, so we're at the Custom Car photo shoot. Uh, WTF1 is uh, all finished, looking good, and uh, against this nice backdrop, so um, let's hope these pics come out good. Okay, so on the photo shoot, it's Simon the photographer doing his thing there. Yeah. <laughs> There's Simon in the bush getting the best shots that uh, we can possibly get there. If you're not in a bush, you're really not trying. It's a laying on the floor move. You've got to get this. You've got to get down, get that low three quarter. So we've moved the car to a different position, size taking some more pictures and it's all looking pretty good. Okay, and check this out at the photo shoot. Size there. Up on the fire exit, getting some killer shots. And the truck is looking great in the sunshine.
This is the 1997 Ford WT F100. And on this show, I'm going to show you all the quirks and features. So here it is, the WTF 100, finally finished, finally out on the road, and uh, here it is in all its glory. You know, all the uh, the grills painted in black. We've even got a number plate. You know, we've, this car's got everything. Uh, paint came out pretty good. So let's take a look around it. Okay, so um, side of the truck, uh, white wall tires. They're just them flaps that fit under, you know, under the bead around the tire. Got a fake exhaust on this side purely for symmetry. Uh, little peep mirrors, I've got to say, them mirrors, they look really good, actually on the road, a little bit useless. Okay, so uh, we got the handles there. These handles are really good because they've got the lock actually in the handle. So, uh, you know, you've not got to worry about the locking mechanism or anything like that. It just, just works. Uh, rear fenders. Again, we've got the jewelry wheels. If you look right down here, look at this. Why have one wheel? You can have two wheels. Double wheels. More action, more traction. In the back here, just to do the, um, just to do the bed, uh, what we've used here is tunnelized uh, six inch gravel board. Just makes a good strong bed. You know, it's good for loading on. It's all right in the wet, you know, it's just gonna last forever. At the back, uh, we got the rear lights, and these are just, uh, as you saw in the build, they're just trailer lights, but um, what we did, we blacked them so they didn't look so much like trailer lights, and here we've used a small white LED for the, uh, for the reverse light, and that passed on the MOT, so yeah, that's got to be a win. Also, we've got a fog light there, it'd look a lot better without the fog light, but again, it's an MOT thing, and number plate light. Uh, I think that actual number plate light was off the original taxi, so a little bit of a reuse there. Um, come around to this side, funnily enough, this side almost exactly the same as the other side. You've got the white walls, a nice low down stance. We've got the actual exhaust here. We've got the actual exhaust sticking out the side. That's actually one that works, and you can tell by all oh, that sucked. The car's not been run for a while. And that's the outside of the WTF1. Let's take a look inside. Okay then, so the interior of the WTF100. Uh, we've got a steering wheel from a Morris 1000, and that's got a little bit of metal flake in it. And the way I did that, I just painted it in, I primed it, rattle canned it in, uh, just in black satin or matte, I can't remember. And then you can buy, um, like Rust-Oleum do, like a clear with a bit of flaking, just some of that over the top to give it the flake. And then I've uh, just 2K glossed it and it, it looks, it, you know, that was a really scabby old wheel. It really, it bought it up nice. In the center of the steering wheel, we've got this bullet and that is the back of, you know, like them old dynamo lights you used to have when you were a kid and you know, you put the dynamo on your mow on, you can barely get up a hill. That's just lopped off the back of one of those. Made that so it fits in, just a nice detail. Um, we've got the cover dashboard that you saw being made and inside this there's all the heater controls um, that puts your heaters on, you've got your hazard lights, everything like that in there, cigarette lighter as well for if you want to use a sat nav, which I've only just realised this has got. I was just driving this thinking, how do I plug a sat nav in? But it's already there so that's all good. Um, other things we've got these we've got the Rolls Royce seats that are wearing in nicely uh, that were painted they're looking really sort of authentic and you know it's a, it's a comfortable ride also it's got you know headliner um, and it does feel when you're driving down the road this feels like a finished car you know it doesn't feel like a clanky you know hot rod where everything's a bit rattly this feels quite a nice finished car and uh, I put that probably mainly down to its London taxi underpinnings. And finally, we've got the door cards. The door cards uh, came out, well, you know, as nice as you can expect, but they're just a lot better than that um, nasty gray plastic that was in there. Uh, it's still the same nasty gray plastic. It's just been painted a bit. But um, we've got this nice chrome detail with these, uh, they're a kitchen drawer handle they are, but they just make it a little bit nicer to close the door. And, uh, yeah, you know what? This car, 
has come out particularly well and I'm quite pleased with it um, and I'm sure it's going to make you know a really great cruiser and all for you know small money really a lot of work but not too much money so this is this project finally finished so then, I've been asked a few times in the comments, uh, what was the cost breakdown? So, here we go. First up, number one, the taxi. And the taxi cost £700. Okay, so, number two, um, to make the body. So, in on this price is making the bodywork form from plaster and filler and um, polystyrene, making all of that taking the mould off of that, having those moulds, getting rid of all the other stuff, then making the actual mould that became the final car, that cost four and a half thousand pounds. But what you've got to bear in mind is, now I have the moulds and I can replicate that body over and over again. So, uh, you know, it's a bit of an investment for the future. Number three, the interior and the lights. Um, all in, that was £400 for the Rolls Royce C and you know, the, uh, we did the rear lights, we had to do some work on the front lights, so the original lights, but we did have to do a bit of work and some other bits and bobs. So then, number five was uh, the paint. So all of the paint prep, uh, so the primer, the top coat and then that super cool Mac 2K that went over it, that came in at £800. So, number six sundries. This is what I'm thinking of as like, um, you know, like grinding this, cutting this, saws all this, uh, sandpaper, those things. That came in at £400. We also uh, spent £300 on skips. So that was like to get rid of all the junk of the taxi. Obviously some of it went to scrap that was uh, metal, but there's a lot of plastic and a lot of junk in the taxi. We had to get rid of that. And also because we made that sort of first shape, we had to get rid of all that plaster and polystyrene. You know, they were, they were big heavy chunks of just rubbish. I also had someone in to do uh, the wiring on the truck. So thank you to Dave Lathe. Okay then, so, the whole truck comes in at just under £7,000. Don't forget, we have got the moulds on that, and the moulds are a big part of this, and that making of the uh, shape and stuff like that. Another thing that isn't on this is my labour. Now, although it only took me nine weeks to, uh, to build the truck, wow, I worked hard. Uh, myself and Kirsty both worked super hard on this. And it was, it was quite difficult to do. So yeah, nine weeks, probably not that long for a build, but it was absolutely intense. So, what points about the WTF 100 are sort of better or as good as the real thing? So, first up, I quite like the shape. It's like a wide body um, F100 truck. Uh, it, it, it seems to have a better sort of presence on the road. And don't forget, most of it's fiberglass, so it's never gonna rust away. Also, it rides really nice. The, uh, the London taxi just sort of, you know, floats along the road. So, it's got, um, it's got power steering and it's automatic, so it's really nice to drive. In an F100 truck, you know, you've got an old flathead engine, you've got big sort of leaf springs front and back. Now, tr those trucks are hard to drive, no power steering. This drives like a, I'm not going to say a modern car, a sort of modern car. So they go down the road nice. And also, if you're not mechanically inclined, you can take it into any garage and they can fix that car. So tyres are cheap, servicing's cheap, all of that sort of thing. And you know all of this is backed up with that 2.7 litre Nissan diesel engine in the front. No turbo, basically nothing to go wrong. And then it's got the Toyota gearbox, which is a slushy old um, automatic, but still bulletproof drivetrain. And uh, yeah, I really do like it. it it's, just, it's just a great truck. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention the WTF 100 is right-hand drive. So if you're driving it um, anywhere in the UK, it's, uh, you're sitting on the right side of the road. 
on like an F100 where you're on the wrong side of the road and not only he's sitting on the wrong side of the road but he's sitting behind the heaviest largest steering wheel in the world okay then so that's it for the WTF1 it's uh, it's finished it's driving it's on the road and it's awesome but that is not it for custom works so if you remember a few weeks ago I took the standard for a bit of a test drive couple of weeks what I'm going to be doing with the non-standard is I'm going to be tackling some of those problems you know it's a nice custom I'll take it up just so that everything works and I'm going to redo some of the paint and I'm also going to add some great custom touches once the 58 Enzyme's finished and cruising down the road and it's super cool custom we're going to have another really big major project and this time it's gonna we're going all out we're okay so that's one project down but join us next week when there's going to be tons more stuff tons more build tons more tech it's all going to be great in the meantime click subscribe leave your comments below and also click the bell icon for regular updates until next time goodbye